These things can Twitter? Oh, I gotta know who's behind this. I'm here in Pasadena, California at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. You know what they do here? They make robots that go into space. How is that not the best job ever? So I'm here at the JPL with Dr. Tara Estlin. Why don't you tell us uh, who you are and a little bit about what you do? Well, my name is Tara Eslin, and I have two main jobs at JPL. One is I'm a rover driver for the Mars Exploration Rover Mission. I mean, you can see a scale model of the rover here. And so I'm one of the people that's responsible for telling the rover where to drive and also how to use its arm, which has a series of instruments on it that it'll place against different rocks. When, when I hear Mars rover driver, I'm picturing you with like a big joystick and like... <laughs> a lot of people picture it that way. Um, but you really can't joystick something that you don't have um, immediate feedback from. Um, so instead what we do is we plan out a full day of activities for the rover and then when we get the results of that back, uh, usually later that night or maybe the next day, then we go through the whole cycle again. I read a lot of things about the mission on the internet. I did hear there was a Sasquatch. I do remember that there is a particular rock that we found that looked an awful lot like a Sasquatch and so that got a lot of good publicity. As far as water, we definitely have found signs or evidence of past water and another craft, Phoenix, which was a lander at one of the poles, um, did find water there. How powerful is the rover in comparison to like my laptop or my Xbox as far as like processing power? It's probably like 20, 30 years um, before that. And a lot of this is because the processor and the hardware has to go up in an environment where there's a lot of radiation and it needs to be radiation proof and that's particularly difficult for computer processors. Um, and also, missions have to have their hardware frozen and ready to go years before we actually fly the mission. When you're working on something like that, you're, on the, you're obviously on the software and the logic side of it. Um, how do you work with other departments like an engineering department or on, on a project like that? In the rover work, both for MER and for my other work, we spend a lot of time talking to the scientists. Um, the majority of missions that JPL does are all driven by science goals. What can we learn about Mars? You know, has life existed there before? So it's very important to involve those people in your work. How do you get into working at NASA? It just sounds so like it's up here, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, I think people come through in various ways. Probably one of the best ways is to go to a school that has a space program. Take classes in aerospace engineering and other things that would be helpful um, for a career in space and can easily get internships at different NASA sites like JPL. So that would probably be the most direct route. So last question, um, can I make it pop a wheelie? <laughs> <laughs> we, we can pop wheelies, actually. Can I pop and a wheelie? Have. That's where I'm coming from. When looking into a potential job opportunity, be sure to check out the people you'll be working with. You know, one of Tara's favorite things about her job is the team of scientists she gets to work with day in and day out. Colleagues can quickly become mentors and really help to shape your career. And Dice.com has loads of advice on how to find the right mentor in the career news and discussion forums. Check them out. It's your opportunity to find your best job ever.